Miss Shane's here and today I'm going to help you with your first grade skills lessons. We are still in unit four and we're on lesson 23. Today's objectives are to identify animals and use adjectives to describe them, read a new story and answer some questions, and then you're going to use the information you gathered on your planning yesterday to write your draft from your informational text. Let's start out with some more adjectives to describe a noun. Are you ready? So I'm going to describe something and I want you to guess which animal from our green fern zoo am I talking about. This big fish swims near the reef and has a lot of sharp teeth. It's the reef shark. Number two, this animal lives in holes underground. The groundhog. Number three, this clever animal uses a stick as a tool to help it get ants to eat. Which animal was that that stuck in a stick to get some ants to eat? The chimps. Number four. This furry animal likes to swim and has webbed paws and sharp claws. That would be the river otter. Number five. This animal has wings. A and a big bill that it uses to catch fish. It's the puffin. And our last one. This animal is a lot like a chimp, except it has a red nose and sharp teeth. That was the mandrill. Did you get them? If you even got one right, give yourself a round of applause. If you got all six right, give yourself two rounds of applause. Fantastic job. We've been doing great with our adjectives and nouns. We've been doing for a long time now. Next, we've got a new story. I think this might be the last one that we're going to be listening to in here. Let's see. Chapter 11, Cranes and Spoonbills on page 60 is the story for us today. Let's look at some words we're going to come across. First, words with the long A sound. Make, crane, care. Tricky words. To, there, before, because. Some contractions. That can't. And then some two syllable words. Remember, let's read them in chunks. Sand hill, sand hill. Spoon bill, spoon bill. Point id, pointed. Wet lands, wetlands. Un Till, until, swim, ing, swimming, inside, inside. Good, now let's look at some vocabulary before we start this story. Our first word is sandhill cranes. Sandhill cranes are birds with long legs that live in the wetlands. Next word is wetlands. Wetlands are swampy marshland areas. Chicks. Chicks are baby birds. And spoonbills. Spoonbills are large birds with spoon shaped bills that live near the water. So let's read the story Cranes and Spoonbills or chapter to learn what sandhill cranes and spoonbills actually look like. So read along with me if you can. 
cranes and spoonbills. Sand hill crane. Here you can see two sand hill cranes. A sand hill crane has long legs, a dark pointed bill, and a red spot next to its bill. Sand hill cranes are found in wetlands. They like to hunt for frogs, snakes, and insects. And the caption on the picture says, Sand hill cranes have long legs, a pointed bill, and a red spot next to its bill. So here you can see that a little better. Sand hill chicks. Those are sand hill cranes too. In fact, that's a mom and dad with their chicks. Before sand hill cranes have chicks, the mom and dad make a nest. The mom sits on the eggs for four weeks until the chicks are born. And the caption here says a sand hill mom and dad look for food with their chicks. So you can see the little ones are the chicks. Spoonbill crane. That's a spoonbill. He has that name because his bill is shaped like a spoon. The spoonbill wades in pools to get his food. He swings his bill back and forth. If he feels an insect swimming inside his bill, he snaps it shut. When spoonbills have a chick, they make a nut. When the chicks are born, they can't see. The mom and dad have to care for them until they can see. And the caption on this says spoonbill cranes have odd bills. So look at that bill. It is kind of odd looking, isn't it? Let's look at some questions for this story. What do sandhill cranes look like? So what are those sandhill cranes, the first bird, look like? They had the long legs dark pointed bills, and a red spot next to their bill. What about the sand hill cranes living? Where do they live? The wetlands, that's right. We said the sand hill cranes live in the wetlands. What do sand hill cranes like to eat? Right here, it says they hunt for frogs, snakes, and insects. So that is what they eat. Do you think it's helpful to have, oh, before that, what do spoonbills look like? Let's look at the picture of the spoonbill. Here's the spoonbill. They have a bill shaped kind of like a spoon. Do you think that it's helpful to have a bill shaped like a spoon? Do you remember what he used it for? He had to scoop up the food in the water. He just sticks it down in and when he feels something, he eats it like it's a spoon. In what ways are sandhill cranes and spoonbills alike? So how are they the same? Well, we do know that they both have chicks and they care for their chicks when they're babies. And they both definitely have bills. They're both tall, they've got those long legs and they live near the water. What about how are they different? The sand hill, he had a dark pointy beak, whereas the spoon bill had more of a light colored spoon shaped, it wasn't pointy, beak, or bill, I should say, not beak, a bill. So we can find these answers. How do we find the answers to these questions? We look back at the story, the words, and the pictures to help us find answers to the questions. We don't have any chapter questions to write for today because we are going to work on our draft. 
list. So you should have your planning page all set with your animal from yesterday. If you don't, please go back and watch yesterday's video and get your animal planning page ready before you go ahead and write your draft. So today you're going to need page 23.1. It looks like this. It's almost the same as yesterday, but without the picture. So everyone's going to use the same page today. So you'll need your planning page. I have mine here, what I wrote down yesterday to practice. And then we're going to copy that and make it into sentences for today on this sheet. So start off, write your name and the date on the top. And then you're going to write the name of your critter. So this is your title. So here where your title is, you're going to capitalize the name of your critter. So for your title, you'll write a capital. I'm going to write trout with a capital T. Then this is my first sentence. I will describe, I will describe a trout. This time, I'm not going to put a capital letter because it's in the middle of a sentence. So I'm going to write, I will describe a trout. And I don't want this to be a capital A. It changed it. There we go. A trout, period. Make sure you put a period because it's the end of a sentence. You're just kind of finishing that sentence. I will describe a trout. And then here, it tells me, describe what it looks like, sounds like, and feels like. So just like the last time we did our draft for the grapes, we're going to use the same words, like it, a trout looks like, a trout sounds like, a trout feels like. And that's easy because we already have all of those words that we need. Right here, it says looks like, sounds like feels like. So you can highlight that if you need to. I'm going to put a circle around those words so you can see what I mean. Right here, it has all of the words that we'll need to write today. So looks like, sounds like, feels like. And we have a trout right there. You're not writing about a trout. I'm writing about a trout. You are writing about whatever animal you did your planning page about yesterday. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Then I want you to do yours. So first I'm going to tell what a trout looks like. If I look back at my planning page, I wrote a few words. So I'm going to use those words to help me write what a trout looks like. Capital A because I'm starting my sentence. Trout is a fish with spots and marks. I'm going to put a period there because that's the end of my first sentence, but I want to write a little more. So I'm going to say it is gray and red with so I wrote two sentences to tell what it looks like. Next, I'm going to say to skip sounds like for me. You might have something that yours sounds like, but I don't have anything for what mine sounds like. But I did have something for what it feels like. So I said it feels like, and then I put scales, slimy, wet, bumpy. So I can choose some of those things, and the words feels like are right here, so I can copy those. A, trout, capital A again, because I'm starting a new sentence. Feels like, and I'm copying the words feels like. A trout feels like. It is bumpy. I'm going to put a comma because I'm writing more bumpy wet and slimy with scales. A trout feels like it is bumpy, wet, and slimy with scales. So I read the sentence again to make sure that was what I wanted to write. And that was what I wanted to write. 
So I got all three of those things here in this part. Now I'm gonna go to my second page. It says home. What did I write about the trout's home? Cool lakes and creeks. So I'm gonna say capital A because we're writing sentences. Trout makes its home in cool lakes and creeks. I'm going to reread it to make sure that's what I wanted. A trout makes its home in cool lakes and creeks. Yep, that's what I wanted to say. I have a capital letter and a period. Ooh, what did I say that a trout ate? Smaller fish. Okay, so I'm going to use a word that we've used before. I'm going to use the word munch. So I want to say a trout munches on smaller fish. That's another way to say eat. A trout munches on smaller fish. So you can use that word too when you write yours. Munches on and then write what your animal munches on or eat. A trout munches on smaller fish. Good. That's what I wanted to write. Next it says fun fact. So they want me to write something I learned that's a fact, a true thing, about the trout. So I'm going to go back and look at my paragraph again to see if there was anything that stood out to me. This paragraph about trout from the story. So I do remember that it says it uses those spots and marks to hide. So I think that's a fun fact, don't you? So I'm going to write that. A trout... A trout has spots and marks to help it hide. There's my fun fact. And then end. So I have to write a sentence to end my story. I'm going to write something that I think. So I'm going to write, I hope to catch a trout. So I know that you can go fishing for trout, so I hope that I can catch one. So I'm gonna write that for my ending. I hope to catch a trout soon. And then I'm gonna put an exclamation point this time because that's a little more exciting than it is just a statement. I hope to catch a trout soon. So if you have a different animal, like one in a zoo, you could say, I hope to see whatever your animal is soon. You wouldn't want to catch a monkey or a chimp, right? But you might want to see a chimp. So write something that makes sense for your ending sentence. Remember, all of these are going to be sentences with a capital letter at the beginning, a period at the end. They're not our notes anymore. We're making those into sentences. When you're finished with yours, so I wrote about a trout, you're going to now do this with your animal, so don't copy mine about a trout. You can use it as an example. But when you're finished, you will be done with your draft, so check mark number two. All we'll have left is to edit. That's all I've got for you today. I'm going to let you go so you can work on your draft, and I will see you all next time.